Okay, so welcome to the third episode now of the Locally Famous Podcast. Um, got a few people with us today. So instead of just one's guest, we have Cody returning. And our very special guest today, Kyle Robertson. Hello. And then uh, co-hosting is always with me. We got Deidre. So this is going to be a fun one because for me personally, this is one of the most like interesting, quiet dudes I know with the wildest story, especially over the past few years and just so much. I mean, he's already been mentioned in every podcast. Oh, we talked about him. Yeah, a we lot. talked about him a you lot. You talked about a lot in our, yeah. that last one in the first one, I think. So yeah, we did. Kyle's been like the number one honorable mention since yeah. like... It pod- felt like it was my podcast. I know. <laughs> it's like you're, it's actually your podcast and we're just filming. We're the special yeah. guys. <laughs> so just so everybody knows, like- Kyle is paying us as sponsors for the podcast. He is. So that's why his name's mentioned. I'm so just going to put a big sign on my name up here. Yeah, didn't yeah. even say Runaway. It just, it's just, just Kyle, Kyle Robertson. Robertson across the whole back <laughs> of the banner is all it is. It's just going with just that. Just so people know who I am. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, just having your name in lights. Yeah. I'm kind of gangster. Maybe we should kind of figure something out. Might have to work that out. Yeah, let's get it. Where you at? Powder, powder coat me yeah, something cool. Okay. Do that. <laughs> okay. Well, that, now we're getting diving into it. So Kyle has been drifting for a very long time. He is very notorious on the internet for quite a few different things. He is somehow the world's luckiest human being. <sighs> Probably the world's most hated human being in a lot of places because yeah. of his oh, luck yeah. Oh, yeah. as well. Um, he's been mentioned in many other a podcast in ways and videos for things you've done and bunch achieved. Bunch of articles online, bunch of big news, like news stories like I've been run about 13, you. 20, so. yeah. mm-hmm. 1320, yeah. Jalopnik, they did it. Yep. We'll oh. talk about that. The notorious one. We'll get into that one because that's 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 wild. I remember oh, that. Yeah. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> but that's a new another time. So diving in first, I want to kind of let everybody know a little bit about who Kyle is, his history, because we already know this. But Kyle, you got right really into cars. Your introductory was drifting, right? Almost. I grew up around round track racing. I forgot about yeah. that. Like, what yeah, yeah. was, the, I mean, right up, what was your, what got you into cars? Uh, I think it was since I was a baby, I was growing up around round track racing. My family did it. And as I was growing up, that's what I was going to do was basically front wheel drive four cylinders is what I was going to get into. But after my mom died, not a sad story, but my mom died and we quit going. So I was like, my dad took me to a drift event and like, oh wait, it was two wheel Tuesdays at Kill Care. And he rode with somebody. I was too young to ride with somebody. I'm like, okay, whatever. Didn't think about it. And then I ended up going to Street Life Tour in, I think, 2012 or 13. And that's really when I got I got hooked. And that was a pretty good peak during Street Life Tour, too. That's when... Oh, those those were the days. Those before me. Those so. were the best. Yeah, I'm dude. I, I missed that. So, but you know what? We're bringing it back this year at uh, oh, No yeah. Star was awesome. So, we got that same vibe. Yeah. A question I had, like, 20 people ask me when I found out you were coming on is, who was your, who was your first ride along? Uh, I forget it. Blake Dodgrill, I think, uh, out of Louisville. He had an S13 Sylvia. Him and Sarah Wilder. Really? She had an S2000. I think it was a Honda. It was owned by Honda at the time. I rode with her and Blake. Where was that at? Uh, Columbus Motor Speedway. Drift Movement. I think that was like 2013. Then they tore the track down for a soccer field. (laughs) The depression. (laughs) Yeah. So that was the kickoff? Yep. What was your, so another interesting piece, what was your first car? Uh, it was a 1990 S13. Single and cam. Starting off with a 240. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. Unfortunately. Well, the thing was, I was working at Jiffy Lube. It was it was going to be an LS400 because I wanted to build a stance car. Gangster. And it was going to be a 240. I'm like, 240s can drift I, very easily. So I was like, I was on my way to pick up a dual cam S13, a very nice one, clean one, had AC and everything. I was on my way to go get it. It was sold. So Super I hopped, hatch. Oh. It was a hatch. So I hopped on Craigslist. I'm like, we're already on our way to Cincinnati. What can we find? So I found this one. It was a single cam. Didn't have heat, didn't have interior, <laughs> ran a drove. So not much change. No, not at all. It was like the biggest turd I could have found. I get there, no hesitation. I bought it. <laughs> and this, uh, and this yeah. is your first car. Yep, 240. Yep, it was it was a it was a pile. That's never gonna happen to many people ever again. No, I was literally on my way home, and the transmission mount fell out. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> no That's heat. the most Kyle thing I've yeah, ever heard. No heat. It was like 20 <laughs> degrees outside. I'm like. I'm going to go home. There's nothing I could do. I'm not working on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting there with a flap. And that's, yeah. I had the similar happen with mine, though. I actually think I called you when that happened. I was driving and the motor mount fell out of my 240. Yeah, I remember that. I had to, like, hop out of the car and, like, run and grab the mount. And I was, yeah. like, running down the road. Had to drive it home and the motor just, like, <laughs> <laughs> flailing in the wind. I was like, what do I do? It's a problem yeah. for another day. <laughs> that was not fun. So the funniest part about everything is me and Kyle became very close over the years, but Deidre actually knew... Kyle and was friends with Kyle before I was. Yes, I did. I did meet Kyle before. It was probably... 
I think it was back in like 2013 or 2014. Around there, yeah. Yeah. Because how old were you then? You would have been... I was probably 17 at the time. 17. So this has been like right because you got the 240 when you're 16? 17. 17. Okay. Yeah. So this was right when he got the 240 then. Yeah. Because I heard like when Deidre found out, like we'll get into how me and Kyle met later, but when we got, when she found out he was going to come over to hang out, she dived into so many stories of you street drifting. Oh, huh. there was a lot of those. <laughs> and that's what she said every time. So like going back, is that really how you found like, where is it parking lot driving? Was it just trying to send it? And it's like, what was that introductory? Uh, it was a lot of, well, the, my, the first places I, cu- I learned to drift was like a, a hairpin turn off the highway and then exit ramps. Safe one. Exit Hell ramp. Yeah. Third yeah. year <laughs> exit ramp drifts in the rain is how I pretty much learned how to drive. How many times did you crash? Uh, once. Once? I didn't, I didn't hit anything, but I went off. There's like, I was going around the exit ramp and I went down the hill. Is that the one you told me about? It was you and Dustin Lowe, and I oh, know, yeah. I think Dustin would, yeah, he would, <laughs> <laughs> you guys had some interesting stories, yeah. for There's sure. There's some, like, back, back roads, gay roads out in Fairborn we would hit every time it rained. It'd be, like, two or three in the morning on a Wednesday or something. <laughs> <laughs> and I went to this corner, I grabbed the handbrake, and I hit a patch of wet leaves. It sent me into a ditch and into a bunch of trees, <laughs> and it smashed my quarter panel, damn near busted the window. That was one of them, and then there was a time Dustin was in front of me, he spun out, I slammed into him. <laughs> so you put you put it through like the ringer early, oh, on, yeah. which explains the, a lot. This later. was with a blown head gasket the whole time. <laughs> oh, sick! I started up at a gas station. It's just rolling clouds, rolling clouds <laughs> with a single cam. Yep, little single until it, until it stops smoking. I'm like, all right, we're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> That's your determining effect. We're warm now. We're set. Yeah, no exactly. more smoke. <laughs> oh my gosh, man, that is way too good. And then, so did you start building that car around like 17 or so? Or oh yeah, as soon as I got it, the first mod I bought. Before I even got the car, was I, I'm going to buy coilovers. I bought, some, I think they were uh, Emusa coilovers. I bought some 15 by 8 XXRs because I didn't know what fitment was. <laughs> I was like, these are going to look great. Put these on. <laughs> and then I paid somebody to weld the diff because I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, I had worked on cars previously, but I didn't know what I was doing. It's a little and, different than round track. Yeah, a little bit. And then my first drift event, I actually totaled the car. I went out there. Is that when you hit the tire? Yes. <laughs> I was winging it. Like, I had no one to teach me. I didn't know anything about drifting other than, like, snow drifting or Silverado one time. And I smacked the tractor tire and totaled the car. It was, it was but, a mint hatch, too. But you did a U thing. And it wasn't... It was totaled, but... I mean, it was totaled, totaled but I put but. overs to cover that. <laughs> <laughs> it was brand new again. Just slapped the overs and called it a day. What yeah, did, pretty much. What did your family think about you getting into drifting coming from, like, Circle Track? Uh... I don't know. My dad didn't really have much input on it, really. No. My cousin, he had a 240 at one time, and so it was kind of me and him trying to get into it at one point. And he did it. He wrecked his 240, <laughs> and he kind of gave up on it. I'm like, well, this is still something I want to go into. So I went ahead and did it. Okay. Okay. That's I was long. just curious. I, I just last time we talked about it, like my family was completely against me yeah. and cars in general. So coming from like a circle track background, I didn't, you know, I don't. Oh know. yeah. I think it was in my my like I still have family that does round track racing, and I think they low key wanted me to do it but I don't think it's near as fun. Okay. I like having a drift car because, you know, it's a drift car you can take on track and you could drive it to a car show. Sure. Didn't you guys, didn't you buy another round track car? Or you just sold one of your dad's, re- like, no, yeah, like a year uh, or two ago. A family member had it of mine and we got it back and my dad's not much of a mechanic, so we just sold it. Your dad's just doing his motor yeah. trailer planes? And- yeah, pretty much, yeah. And funny fact is with family is, is these two mm-hmm. are, most people don't know, actually related technically. Yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Related by marriage. Mm-hmm. Yes, you found out. Makes us cousins. After you started drifting, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was I, just like you met me one day, and they were like, "I'm your cousin." I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> I don't know that." Yeah. So you married. I mean, your wife is my cousin. Just to kind of put some, you know, relationship. Yep. Into it. So somehow you guys are cousins. Yeah, I still, I, I still don't know that story, but I think <laughs> I, somebody can correct me. But I think we're second cousins. I think. So, I think yeah. is how is how marriage. the term goes. Yeah. Kind of. Well, her dad is my mom's cousin. So however that works. Yeah. However Good families, once family it goes past cousins, yeah. I lose track of like like third, fourth, 17th yeah. cousins. Yeah. Like somebody, like, somebody will know better than I do. But We're, There's some blood, some family somewhere involved. And yeah. yeah. Somehow. So we're related, dude. That's dope. Passed on the family luck. <laughs> so after you did, so you totaled the car, you did overs. What was your like, did you continue? What that You kept building that car. Yeah. It was after that point, I'm like drifting... I didn't think I was going to total my car. because like, this was a pretty nice 240 when I got it. It was pretty much rust-free, had mint quarter panels on nice paint. I told her, I'm like, well, I'm an idiot. <laughs> so I was like, you know what, we're going to build a stance car. So I had, stance car, it had 17 by 9 XXRs. 
I had literally fender to lip fitment on the front for the longest time. My cross member sat this far off the ground, <laughs> and I drove this thing everywhere. It scraped, it drug, it <laughs> threw sparks, the exhaust <laughs> fell off a million times. <laughs> and it was at some point I thought, I'm going to try drifting again. Didn't like it. Really? Yep. I didn't know that. So you tried to get in it, crashed it, went stancy, tried to drift, didn't like it. Yep. And how long did it take until it like finally was like clicked? Well, I still like street drifted, but I don't know why it just didn't click on a track. Like it was fun. I think I drove with Drift Indy before I really, really lowered it. This was my first year in my car. Like I bought, I did the first event after two weeks of owning the car. I did Drift Indy like a month later and I did fine that day, but I was like, it's just ain't it. It's not as fun. So I stanced it, drove it like that for a while. I still drifted it, street drifting. Mm -hmm. But I think it was after I bought my SR was the point I was like, I'm really going to get into drifting now. After you bought God's motor. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> I did a lot of drifting with a single cam though, like a lot. I don't but know how you finished that. <laughs> what year was that? It was a 90. No, no, no. What year would, were you doing all that when you SR swapped oh, the car and got uh, back into it? Oh, I couldn't tell you. I was 17. 17, and I think I put an SR on it when I was 19. Okay. 19 or 20. Were you still working at Jiffy Lube? I was. No, I actually quit before I put the SR on. This before or after trucking? This was before. Where were you working then? Uh, a lot of places. <laughs> I've had a lot of jobs. <laughs> I know. Well, this was back mysterious. when SRs weren't. Like you yeah, what did you pay for? You it? didn't have to take a mortgage out for an SR. I paid twenty one hundred dollars full swap. That's see, that's what's nuts is that price didn't go crazy until literally I bought mine mm -hmm. and it went insane. So I bought mine in what twenty nine? I think it was. I think I bought mine. Yeah, I think it was twenty nineteen. What'd you pay for yours? Twenty one. Really? For a full swap out too. Good luck doing that now. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Like it's insane. And that was an S fourteen notch yeah. top, like T twenty eight. Add a zero. Yeah. That's, right. <laughs> yeah, literally at this point. I mean, it's 10 grand, mm -hmm. which is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> you can't touch an SR hatch for less than 10 grand anymore. It's crazy. They used to be like $2,500 cars. These are, you, oh, you just sold yours. Let's say you had one for sale, but it's no, just... I did. <laughs> sold it for basic, basically 11 grand. I can't believe that. We can cheap. also get into why later they're not that cheap anymore because of Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm the reasoning for that I one. know. Yeah, you totally butchered that for everybody. Oh, but we'll yeah. dive into that here in a second because... <laughs> That's where some of the articles and things start coming in, mm -hmm. and that's where your uh, internet hate. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Oh, when, you have a lot of internet yeah. hate. Yeah. When did your 240 Kyle, right? When did yep. that start? Uh, I think it was, I don't know, honestly. No. I've just, everybody knew me by my 240. It's what I've always had. So it's just always been 240 Kyle? Yep. That was like, that was before I knew you. So yeah. I, you know, I don't, I don't even know that story. I don't know. Um, I think it's I just, just everybody knew me by the guy with a 240, basically. Okay. Okay. Boy getting shreddy in a single cam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. So you did that. So you SR swapped the car. You kind of continued building it from there. And then you started. So after how long after the SR swap did you actually do like events where things started to like flow? Because it clicked for you pretty quick. Because oh, I remember yeah. going to events like you. Because I started going to drifting events around 2011. Yeah. And I remember when you started coming out. And I remember it was like, who the... Like, who was this guy? Yeah. Because you, like, shredded straight out the oh, game. Oh, yeah. So I did my first drift event. I was able to link corners just fine. But I couldn't do the whole track because I obviously had, like, 90 horsepower. So <laughs> my second drift event was a couple months, like, a month later. I did that with Drift Andy. I could link the whole track just fine in the rain. With a the single then, jingle? Oh, yeah. It did it. I mean, it wasn't the greatest line. I didn't know what I was doing, but I could do it. And then it was a couple years later. It was maybe a year or so later that I put my SR in, and I was like, I have some power. I think I'm going to give it a shot. So I went out there, did it, and I did perfectly fine. That's crazy. It was, I, was like, I wasn't a very consistent driver, but I could do it. And I think it was my third or fourth event. I was starting to tandem with people. That's wild. How do you feel about that, Cody? I can't eat, like, third or fourth event. Dude, my third or fourth event, I was, like, still linking corners. Really? Yeah. Like you said, that was first event, no big deal. Like, yeah. Dude, it took me, I feel like it took me forever to progress. Like, I feel like it, I was very slow to progress. Yeah. I mean, obviously, mean. right up until I got the IS. But yeah. Um, I mean, with tandem, last episode. Yeah, with tandem, I think it's more of you need to not care. You okay. need you need to if you're going to follow somebody, think if I get in a wreck, it's not a big deal. It's just a car. I did almost hit a couple of people a couple of times, and I that kind of like slowed me down. I'm like, yeah, I need to chill. Out a bit. <laughs> so, did you? So that end then too? Have you going up to that time and going up to current? How many wrecks have you had on track? And uh, I'm going to feel bad asking this question because there's I, a couple that are my fault and a couple that are not. Don't so, look at me when you say that. <laughs> I've, I've I've tapped the wall probably 20 or 30 times consistently without like smashing my car. I've ran into two other people that were not my fault and that's it. Oh, and the tractor tire incident. And the tractor tire. <laughs> yeah. One of them was my fault, just so everybody knows. Yeah, I, I, I broke his knuckle, but I've never told him. No, not car. even that one. 
I got you in a crash. Oh yeah. When yeah, I blew I my power steering line and I spun one. and you caused we we did some silhouette stuff. We were just like, oh, oh, oh yeah. I don't know how. Right, and all of a sudden perfect. I was like, saw another car coming. I was like, oh gosh. <laughs> I didn't even know he was back there. No. I'm not I just, mad. I didn't know he was there. No, me neither. I just heard a thump and I was like, oh, what happened? Yeah, and I exactly. pulled around and Kyle was like, well. <laughs> I got out, it. took a video, I'm like, ooh, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Are you literally No, I'm even mad. <laughs> I had a video of me pulling up to you and you're like, oh my God. So you've had a lot of a lot wait a lot of cars. Oh yeah. So, I mean, since I've known you, you've had like fifty cars. I've literally had <laughs> two hundred plus. What was your next drift car? Skyline. Was it? That was after my two forty. Yeah. So you had your two forty for that long. Wait, you had, did, you, did you have the G before the Skyline? Uh, at, I had it during the Skyline. Okay, so you had the Skyline, which was a drift car. Yeah, pretty much. You it was like, supposed to be. It was supposed to be, and then it looked yeah. too pretty, and you were like... <sighs> yeah, so my whole point was, I was driving my 240, and after I blew up 10 transmissions, I'm like, you know what? I'm ready to build something else. I wanted a four-door. Four-door, big-body drift car. So I'm like, you know, the closest thing there is to a 240 is a Skyline. So I parted my hatch out in hopes of using that money to buy a Skyline after I sold that red hatch on Bring a Trailer. Not knowing it would sell for what it did, I didn't even need to part out my 240 to buy a Skyline. <laughs> no, I remember that day too. So the wild part to think of is, is your first car was the S13. That car went from single cam car, drifting it that way, to SR. Most people don't realize when they look at the timeline of things is the last stage of that car was the blue mm -hmm. with the mm -hmm. stages, right? Yep. That is the same car that was his first car. Yep. And I didn't know that for the longest time. I don't even know if you knew that. That was no, the same car that used to bring to the I apartment. I did not. And that car, that I mean, it somehow still looked amazing. It did. It looked real until we... It's easy to make a 240 look good. No, it is. If you want to learn how to make a clapped car look amazing, call Kyle. Because mm -hmm. I always thought that car... I remember when you brought it over after you got it wrapped blue. I'm like, dude, this thing is insane. Yeah. <laughs> and then I remember when we we were starting to part it out. And I was like, holy crap, it was, dude. <laughs> it was like <laughs> how you had like the rear quarter like mm -hmm. stitched back together. They were together. all cut out. And <laughs> dude, it been... Folded and pulled and cut yep. and like... You would never have known either. It looked so good. Yep. So you can do a lot with a piece of crap. Yep. Fiber as long as everything's too. not rusted out. Oh, yeah. Because that car wasn't that rusty, was it? Eh. It probably is now. It was yeah. kind of rusty. <laughs> now it's real rusty. <laughs> like the yeah. driver frame rail was gone, but it was it never got worse over the course of eight years. Does any S13 have a driver frame rail? Mine does. Your new one does. That's from Florida, so... Hey, uh, that was a mint condition. Never wrecked. Never <laughs> yeah, messed exactly, with a car. Yeah. I Hello, that internet. One. That rocket bunny car. <laughs> yeah. We got videos on that. Both of us do, actually, mm -hmm. on ruining that car. Oh, yeah. So, Skyline. And then after the Skyline is a very, I know, very controversial car that you picked up. That was the Beater G35 sedan. Yes. This oh, yeah. car was, <laughs> I feel like, probably one of your biggest learning Absolutely. stepping stones. But oh, yeah. I think it's also one that taught a lot of these kids some real bad habits and had kids doing <laughs> yeah. things and also made a lot of people angry. Oh, absolutely. Because you hooked that thing. Yeah. I mean, it did was... you buy that for the intention of doing what you did? Absolutely. So you literally so, just bought it to throw it at the wall? Yeah. So my two four, or my Skyline was still being, it was, it was pretty much done, but it was five different colors. And I don't like driving ugly looking cars. So I was like, you know what? We're going to buy this to drive on Thursdays because it's cheap. I paid three grand for it. They ran and drove. I had angle kit and like a, just like a GK Tech bolt on, some coils. Had a hydro. I had a hydro. I had an NRG seat that had three bolts holding it in. Hell yeah. And I went out there and thrashed that thing. You and it was some thrashed. of the most fun. Yeah, th it was the most fun I've ever had in a drift car. I remember, <laughs> remember coming to Thursdays and just saying like, and who says thrash the thing? That literally means like quarter. <laughs> like this thing went from like, it was clapped when he got it. But like when he was done, like he would the, literally. The taillights touched each other. Yes, it anything. was, it was. Yeah, it was rough. <laughs> that thing wrecked. And you still like street drove that car too when it was Absolutely. Popped. It was straight pipe too. I drove that thing out. <laughs> and you sold that car and it continued to be a drift car. It did. Now it did. it's not. No, I think it got parted out. I think that's a good thing. I think, I think at one point when I when I hit somebody in the rear, right rear door, I broke the subframe. Did you really? Yep. I that's didn't know that. That had loaned them subframe like a Z too, right? I think so, yeah. Oh, yeah it broke it and I sold it to somebody. And I, I sold it for really cheap. So like it wasn't bad. Really cheap. But at that point, he realized it was cracked, and he sold it, and the next I parted it out. I have a question, though. Did you, like, learn a lot from driving that car that way, or was it just yeah. you did? It's the fact that I didn't care about that car, mm -hmm. so I wasn't afraid to hurt it. So it was so, an, like an Ebisu missile. Yeah. I mean, if you're willing to hit the wall 20 times, eventually you're going to learn the point that, like, 
this is too much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then right. he learned what was too much and he just kept. <laughs> exactly, yeah. There was, it was after like the 10th hit. I'm like, this is fun. I'm going to keep doing it. I I can't even count how many times I saw that wall, wall, car wipe a wall. Oh, it was a blast. You know it's too much when your rear track width is eight inches shorter than yeah. your front track width. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Car's built like a piece of pizza now. <laughs> I think it was after I got hit in the passenger door, the right rear wheel was towed in like five degrees. <laughs> and I kept drifting that day. <laughs> Just kept, that sounds like a you regardless. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. I was like, I'm not done driving yet. I think we drifted <laughs> my car like that a few times. Probably. The day we broke my knuckle when you went out. Oh, it yeah. Was like, it was pretty bad. <laughs> You're like, why is this thing so fast? That was sketchy. <laughs> so we had that. So right out the gate, I'm diving right into this one. Big. So before winning cars, before anything like that, the red S13. This is the one we talked about, has had a bunch of stuff wrote about it. Mm-hmm. People hate on it, everything. Give, give everybody like the story of how you found the car, how you sold, just what, because this is insane. This is the car that like started everything too, right? The price hike of 240s? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, started your journey, started the oh, journey yeah. with 240s, but um, yeah, dude, it was crazy. So my buddy actually messaged me. He's like, hey, I found a 240. I want to go check it out. He's like, you know much about them? I'm like, yeah. He's like... You know, he's like, what kind of mods can I do for cheap? Are they reliable? All this stuff and this, this, and this. And he sent me some pictures of it. It looked abandoned. It was sitting on the side of the road, had a flat tire. I'm like, I mean, depends on how much it is. They're pretty good cars. He's like, all right, I think we're going to check it out. And a few weeks went by. He's like, man, I'm not going to be able to buy it. I'm like, I was like, all right. He's like, you want to buy it? I'm like, maybe. Because at the time, I was kind of looking for a 240 to buy to put on small wheels, some 15s. And this is when you were talking about like getting in the transition of phasing out the blue car. Yep, pretty much. Yeah. So I still had the blue car at the time, yep. but I wanted a really nice daily that I was pretty much going to ruin. <laughs> so he showed me this, and I got in contact with the owner, and it was some super nice dude out in the middle of BFE, Ohio. And I get there. He's like, yeah, it's my grandma's car, uh, or his mom's car. She passed away. She was like, or he's like, I'm just ready to let it go. He had a really mint Z32, same color, mint condition. So he knew what he was selling, mm-hmm. but at the time, but did he? <laughs> I don't think any of us did. No, because I, I didn't either. Because <laughs> it was, it was literally the cleanest S chassis I've ever seen in my life. And I was almost like, I don't want to buy this. It was four grand. I'm like, four grand for a single cam is a lot of money. I think almost, about that. Four grand for a rust free, mint condition single cam was a lot of money at yeah. one point. <laughs> it was. It was literally the cleanest two forty I've ever seen in my life. And I was like talking to my wife. I'm like. I almost don't want to buy it. And I was like, this is a lot of money for what it is. She's like, come on, buy it. It's clean. You won't regret it. And I bought it, took it home. And then the next day, I went and bought coilovers and wheels. I'm like, I'm going to ruin this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I posted pictures of it, and everybody's like, dude, do you sell this thing? I'll bring a trailer. I'm like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> and I looked, and everything's like 10, 15, 20 grand for an S chassis. I'm like, I'm like, what? Who does this? Who pays <laughs> this I much did, for You a didn't want to pay 4K for one. Yeah, who pays this much for a 240? And I'm like, I was like, I could sell for that. I yeah. remember when you got that, too, because that was right at the same time we were still building my S14. Oh, yeah. And I remember you talking about, oh, I'm going to buy it, I'm going to buy it, and then you bought it, yeah. and then didn't hear anything about it, and you're like, me and Ben did a photo shoot, mm-hmm. and then it got posted. Yeah, and so I had, like, I posted on Marketplace just to see what people offered me. I got offered, like, right-hand drive, Nissan Laurel. I got offered, like, SR240s and everything, and I'm like, as much as I'd love to trade for these, I think I can get more out and of it. And I can't believe you didn't because you're a king of trades. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, was, I cannot believe that you held out. Yeah, and so uh, it went on bringing a trailer. And the number one thing I've learned with selling cars is the more people who see it, the better your odds are selling it. So I posted this t- car in Everything. 15 different Facebook groups I could find. And luckily I found some dude out of New Jersey who owned one of these when he was younger. He met his wife with it. Uh, that's pretty much how he started his whole life was this car and his brother wrecked it. And mine was everything down to like the perfect trim, the color, everything. Everything was the exact same as his. And he's like, I'm doing whatever it takes to buy this car. And it's crazy. So this guy, and this wasn't just like a regular guy. This was a pretty, uh, we're not going to name names. Or, this is a pretty high profile dude that found this car mm-hmm. because the price he paid for this car isn't the price that, especially at that time. Because again, this is still when, as he said, a 4K 240 was a lot of money. Oh, yeah. Like a lot of money. And it went up. And I remember. The, the day it went up, I still remember the stakes. I was sitting at work, and I was texting you, like, the whole day. And I'm like, bro, what is yeah. happening? Because you started out, like, what did it, first day, what was it at? I think it was, like, 65. And you paid for it. Yeah. I, and I remember we're like, 
Oh my God. I was like, dude, damn, is... I made 2K profit. I didn't do anything. <laughs> Sitting there in the garage drinking bangs, working yeah, exactly. on my roll cage the whole time. <laughs> literally. While you're looking at this. And then it literally progressed. I mean, it progressed quick enough and it was going at a number that even your bring a trailer, I saw it on every, mm-hmm. I mean, everybody was resharing it. Oh yeah. Because it went like 65 and then it was like 10. Yeah. It was then, like the last 30 minutes, it jumped 20 grand. Yeah. And like I was driving down yeah, the highway. It was two dudes, wasn't it? Pretty much, yeah. two, I think it was like three dudes up until like the mid-teens, and it was two dudes after that. And neither one of them wanted to like let go. Where were you when, I, I kind of know, but where were you when you saw like bids done? So I was driving down the highway at work because I was a truck driver. Driving down the highway, don't show my ex-bosses. I'm like driving down the highway. <laughs> <laughs> 30 grand. I'm like, what is going on? So I pulled over and I was like, holy shit. $32,000 for an S chassis. You paid four grand for like yeah. right before that. Yeah. And like literally 20 minutes later, the guy called me and super nice dude. He's like, he's like, I know you're not going to tell me what you pay for. I was like, 4,000. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, man, you really did, didn't you? I'm like, oh yeah, I made some money. And that right there was a moment that people just could not believe because that's, that is, and I've heard it in a bunch of people's YouTube videos. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think, I mean, Jimmy Oaks has mentioned it. It's yep. been mentioned by, I'll, I mean, car and driver, yep. Jalopnik, 1320. Yeah. A lot, I mean, everybody mentioned it that Everybody point. knows that car. And that is right at that time, that tipping point of 240s went from a four grand is too much to why is every 240 yeah. $20,000? Exactly, yeah. yeah. This is why. Right yeah. here. If you yeah. want to blame <laughs> anybody for the price hikes of 240s, it's me. <laughs> and not just cars like at that that's when and again that's when covid things started going on and things yeah. like that which has a little bit of a play but when people see a pretty i mean and the fair thing is, is it was meant but it wasn't a perfect car no it, like it the exhaust had rust on it the exhaust was actually rotted out it had a hole in it uh everything underneath had surface rust on it like all the arms which and it had like pretty, a dent on the roof didn't it yeah on the the roof had like a dent the a pillar had a dent I think there was a small chip in the windshield. The front bumper, the front lip had some paint chips in it. Like, it wasn't mint. No, but that's when everybody's mindset, they see the picture, like, this sold for 30? Yeah. And everybody instantly was like, well, mine is just a little quarter rot. Yeah. Now yeah. it's a 13. Yeah, exactly. Okay, but Ben McConnell did a great job of taking those pictures. Oh, those photos oh, were so good. Yeah. Had I taken those pictures on my phone, I would have got half the price. Yes, mm-hmm. definitely. Especially with your photo skills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the videos. Yeah. If you ever watch Kyle's, uh, Kyle's vlogs, I mean, again, I love them, but... It makes you motion sick. Yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> I don't really pay attention when I'm recording. No, I've recorded with you before. You're just along for the ride at that point. <laughs> just don't edit it out. When we were doing the transformation of the S13, there's clips in there where you were like carrying the tripod by the tripod. Yep. And it's just like flailing <laughs> Trying around. to get them 10 minutes in. <laughs> <laughs> that had me weak. And then this is around, so this is around the time that you won the, which car, what was the first car? This is okay. So this will be a big segment. This is a world. Uh-huh. So basically, Kyle sells a 240 for 30 G's that he bought for four grand. People are all bummed about it. And then next starts Kyle's next venture, which is probably more hateful yeah. is this dude wins every freaking car on every freaking page. This is where he sold his soul to some un, you know, unearthly force. Yeah. Yes. It worked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you make a deal with the devil for this? Right. I did. How did this happen? <laughs> this is the point I, in his life. I wish I did because I'd win a lot more cars. <laughs> <laughs> right. Your pockets would probably be a little more yeah, full. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's such a weird thing to say. I'd win more cars. Yeah, more cars. Yeah. Like, right. bro, we talked about this last time. I won a hat. <laughs> That's I've the won, only. I've won a hundred grand at drift cars. Literally, you literally have. This is the only thing I've ever won. Have you won anything in your life? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Honestly, like I, I can't even win a scratch off ticket. <laughs> like I, I'm not even joking. You got to shut up. You won a car, yeah. yeah. So you don't have any Thanks room to, to say dude. anything. Whatever devil he sold his soul to, like it came in. You know, the family thing came yeah, together. The family and was devil. Like, oh, I win yeah. one now too. <laughs> they so took your soul too, though. I know. <laughs> I think that I no, literally, it's all right. Well, it, yeah, they did. It worked out good for you. Yeah, I know. You guys are both. <laughs> and these guys are both drifting one cars. Yep. Mm-hmm. We're not the only ones. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because you won the IS, uh-huh. and you won the S3. You got, and those were both from GS. Yep. The current cars mm-hmm. you guys have are the both from... The current cars we both drive are both from GS, yeah. Yep. But his luck started way before that. Yes. Oh, yeah. So winning cars. What went about when and what was the kickoff for this? So there was a guy on my Instagram. I'm not going to mention his name due to some you know legal issues, but 
He did a car waffle, and it was an S15 Sylvia Spec R, or you could choose a JZX100. I wanted you to pick that JZX so bad. It was very nice. S15. It was on some really gangster wheels. But I'm not one of the JZX guys. I was an S chassis guy. Now you are. And so I entered, and he gave me a random number. And so I was like walking through Walmart, and I was just watching this live stream that I pretty much almost forgot about. And he picked my number, and I was like, I was like, what? (laughs) And so he called me. I'm like over here sweating. I'm shaking. I was like, what did I just win? He's like, pick one. I'm like, an S chassis. He's like, yeah, S chassis. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I've owned every single S chassis there is besides an S15. And, and that's what won I took. the S15. And I, again, <clears throat> I was right. This was bound the same time. And this is how short the segment is. My 240, we built my whole car from a bare shell in six months. So in this six month period so far, Kyle has bought the red car, sold it for 30 Gs. Yep. And now he has, and you bought the Skyline yep. during that period too, parted the S13, and then you won the s 15. 15, yep. That was the craziest moment. Oh, yeah. That was a lot of months of excitement. That was, yeah. a, that was in, I mean, I mean, it wasn't even legal. <laughs> no. <it wasn't. laughs> you couldn't even try it. I remember I mean, you're like, can I insure this? Like, <laughs> I couldn't get it insured, but I did get it registered. They're <laughs> yes. like, what kind of car is this? I'm like, a Sylvia? <laughs> They're like, here you go. I'm like, mm, sweet. I could not believe that they just like, uh, I know. Here you go. After I, having 200 cars, that's the only car I'm mad at you for getting rid of. It, it was definitely, like, there's probably less than 100 people in this country that have owned one of those. I know. And why did you get rid of it? <sighs> At the time, I was like, I hate over fenders. I wanted a stock body car. And, like, now I'm like, I don't even care about over fenders. It don't bother me. I know why you got rid of it. I just wanted you to put that out there yep. on the internet. That, that and Just money. saying over fenders is the reason you got rid of a spec R, yep. S15. That. And, like, there was, like, a $30,000 profit on the table. Of, I was, like, me doing nothing but taking this car. And That's like, fair. That's fair. It's hard to walk away yeah, from it 30 It is hard Gs. to walk away it from It is. That. Like, you can't say no to $30,000. No. It was free. No. Yeah. I mean, I don't... <laughs> I did. And you, yeah, that's, yeah, that's okay, though. Yeah. <laughs> I did it again. Somebody offered me... And again. And, well, and, and again. again. Yeah. And, and again. So we won an S15, sold the S15, and then, oh, look, you won another car. Yep. I hate Which you. Which car was that? You want the S... <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I hate you. Don't even <laughs> talk to me right now. That was the 86, I think. <laughs> was it the 86, the next car? Uh, I think it was like a year and a half later. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because no S chassis. Which S chassis? My current one. It was. Yep, I won that. I think a year later. Yeah, it was that mm-hmm. one. Yeah, and that car, <laughs> that thing. That thing's right. I remember. So, gets this car. It comes from the south, right? Mm-hmm. We are amped. Like I remember, Kyle's like, "Bro, it's coming. It's on the way. It's I was on the way." Sell it. Bro, how was? <laughs> and I know what happened the day you got to your. How was your reaction when you got to the house? It was the worst experience of my life, <laughs> honestly. I don't think I've heard this story. Okay, so <laughs> Dude, it's real. I was asleep. I woke up at 7 a.m. knowing they were coming. They didn't call me. They didn't show up or nothing. My neighbor from around the corner calls me. She's like, I think I just saw your 240 sitting down the street on a trailer. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, they look lost. I'm like, great. It is negative two degrees outside. <laughs> I go outside, hop in, my, in the Honda, drive down there. The guy didn't speak any English. I was like, are you lost? And we managed to get a yes out of him. And I got him to my house. The car you could have just got you could this wouldn't even have been your car you wanted. This guy might have yeah, just given exactly. you a car. Yeah, literally. <laughs> but he, he came to my house. He wouldn't go down my street because he couldn't the get The street a is a little sketch though. Yeah, but I don't know why I couldn't do it. But if you couldn't do it, you could have done it. Oh, absolutely. But the car wouldn't start. And the battery was dead. As we're rolling the car off the trailer, the trailer ramp flips up and smacks the side skirt, cracks it, a real rocket bunny kit. And a I, real ugly kit. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, why is this thing cranking so slow? Because I even had jumper cables on and everything. The radiator was frozen. Have, all like, the coolant hoses frozen. Oh no, it was, it was <laughs> all heat, water. Yeah, oh. The heater core hoses frozen. Everything was frozen. The water pump, it actually ended up breaking because it was so frozen. That's brutal, dude. <laughs> I was I was very lucky that it didn't crack the block or anything. I just remember getting that text. You're like, dude, what the hell do I yeah. do? You're like trying to find like unorthodox methods yeah. to just get this car to like heat up. Because yeah. I mean, everything. I mean, I think it's a Florida car. Uh huh. Water only. It's mm-hmm. like 30 degrees and it's just frozen solid. They put some antifreeze in it. But I think since it was like sitting like this backwards on a trailer, all that airflow is hitting the radiator. Yeah. So I literally got to fire up, drove it home. Immediately threw the radiator in a bathtub. Oh, that's that. how you did it? That's how I did okay. it. I remember that. <laughs> and I finally got it warmed up and it finally got it started driving. And this thing, oh my God, it ripped. Bro. It was fast. I have, I'll put in a video of that because I mm-hmm. it was like the day you the day you got the radiator back in, you brought it over and we oh, took yeah. it out. And those tires were definitely not Bernie tires. They were huge. They were they spin them too. They, well, they were meaty. That was a drag were, car, wasn't it? 
It was. I mean, he only dragged it a couple of times, but he built it with the intention of the drag the, racing. Guy. Right. So it wasn't a drift car. Not at all. Yeah. Not okay. at all. No, it didn't even look like a drift car out the gate. No. This thing was ugly as shit. I'm not going to lie to you. This car was piss ugly. It was definitely built to appeal in like the early 2000s, maybe. Mm-hmm. Rocket Bunny, Sylvia Front. The paint looked good. Wheels. Oh, it was beautiful. That color was amazing. That was a beautiful mm-hmm. car. It was. It would have been beautiful. If that car had any kit but a Rocket Bunny kit, that car would have been yeah. like amazing. It was definitely a show car for what it was, and it just wasn't for me. And we ruined it. Yep. I was like, <laughs> I was like, man, this thing is unbelievably fast. I'm a big SR20 guy, and that was my first time driving an SR20 VVL, and I'm like, this thing is insane. I'm never selling it. <laughs> Dude, it the sounds. I remember when you took me for a street rip, and I was like, bro, what the hell is yeah, this? And you're it like, was nuts. let's do a donut. And I was like, yeah, please. Like, let's do this. I remember filming it just outside the car, and I was like, do what? It was loud. Like, I drive an SR car, and I'm like, oh, my car is fun. And yeah. I was like, what in the hell is, like, it sounds like a rotary. It does. It is literally, it's probably as loud as a straight pipe rotary is. It's scary. It's insane. It is so much fun, though. It sounds, it's scary on your door. Oh, it is. It's so that fun. car is... It was Rocket Bunny. It had SSRs. It has the biggest thing about this car. It was a SR20 yep. VVL. Yep. So yep. what the, people who don't know what is what is that? So a VVL is it's a head off a Nissan Primera, I believe. I think there's a couple different versions of it. There's like a P12, a P11, and some others. I didn't. I still don't know that much about it. I don't really care. But <laughs> Just basically, it. it's kind of a costly head swap to do. You have to change the head. You have to run different pistons to clear the valves. There's something you got to put in the block, like an oil port you got to block off. You have to run a different intake and a different exhaust because the ports are bigger. And it's basically VTEC. So it's basically Nissan's version of VTEC in the early 90s. And it and revs it, to freaking hell oh, back. to the mm-hmm. moon. The, one of the guys that I got my car off of, his buddy said they used to rev this car consistently to 9,500 RPMs. That's insane for an SR. On a stock head. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it blows my mind because that car. Yeah. This car used to make over 700 horsepower at one point. It's got a big old turf ski on her, it's too. It's huge. Like, it sucks for drifting for what I'm doing with it, but mm-hmm. it, it ripped. It sucks for drifting what I'm doing for it, and you blew it up and bought yeah. another <laughs> of the exact same turbo. <laughs> I was just trying to get it going again. <laughs> sure go enough, well. no, it ain't going. That didn't go well. We'll go into that in a sec. Oh, that's depressing. That's depressing. So we did that. So you changed the whole... So this is his current car right now. Yep. Current car, I say very lightly yeah. right now because yeah. it's currently it's not down. a car. Right yeah. Now. Yeah. yeah, it's currently down, but mm-hmm. it looks like this. It looks the same. It just don't have a motor. It looks good on jack stands. Mm-hmm. It does. <laughs> but my new wing that I haven't even got to drive with. That thing's gangster. You got two dope wings now. Yep. I want both of them. <laughs> so do I. But I can only run one of them. <laughs> I know, but you're not going to get rid. If you get rid of the other one, we're going to fight. Oh, I know it. I know I'm going to regret it. But you're not going to get. If you get rid of it, I'll just buy it. That's true. Yeah. I'll buy it. Off it's very expensive. I'll store it in a shelf. It's very expensive. It's okay. We'll figure it out. You can't let that leave. That's true. So after that car, you brought up the 86. So you win yet another car. Um, number three. Yeah, yeah, number three. After selling a 240 for 30 Gs, and right. now he's winning his third car. Did yep. you still have the Skyline at the time? You did, didn't you? Yep. Because you bought the Skyline with the money you made from the 240. Yeah, exactly. The red one that you sold. Yeah. Okay. So you had the Skyline already, and now you just had this gangster 86. So say a little bit about that. So the best part you have to say is where the car, where it started, where it oh, went, yeah. and where. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So like, long story short, is I had my Skyline. I had it for about a year of drifting it. I hated it. Like it was fun. It was cool for what it was, but I can't beat on it like I do my 240. I can't run into people. Basically, <laughs> it's not as fun because it's so clean. And I got my 240. So I stopped driving the Skyline for like six or seven months. I didn't touch it. I know you did. And by sitting, it means it went. Kyle had a, had a, oh yeah, he my had garage. a, Just like, tent. Oh, he had the tent. I remember the first time. So before we even dive into the 86, I want to dive into the fact that if you follow Kyle on Instagram or anything like that, and you've seen how gangster, I mean, every car you have looks amazing. Like, I'm obsessed with every camera. car he has. Mm-hmm. On camera, at least. So when me and Kyle were hanging out, he came over to the garage, helped me work on the cars and everything like that. And I remember he's like, I'm going to go work on my car. I never really understood it. And he's like, Oh, yeah, I'm just working outside. Bro, it's like zero degrees out. This dude would, in negative temperatures, be in your driveway, not in a garage, nope. working on the car outside. So you decided to buy a, like, Harbor Freight, like... Carport, <laughs> plastic, yeah. <laughs> plastic carport. <laughs> I bolted the fabric through the garage of my house. <laughs> it didn't blow away. <laughs> and you worked out of that for a while, and that's where the that's where the uh, skyline rested mm-hmm. for... Oh, yeah. Can I like, add, like... 
I don't know when it got like this, but it kind of got weathered. So wasn't it like ripped on the top and like the oh, sides? Yeah. Okay. Not just it was doing this thing where it was like if you walked in it or touched it, it like snowed. Yeah. yeah. Because the tarp material was like it coming does. apart. So like <laughs> you go to, Kyle literally refused to drive the skyline for months because he didn't want to clean it because every time he touched the car, it would just snow on it. Yeah. And it would have like tarp material oh, just yeah. covering the car. I built so many cars out of that thing too. You did. You still have it. No, it's gone now, right? No, it's there. It's just not one. Not what it looked it's like. Not a tent. <laughs> the roof kept gone. weathering. Yeah, it the snowed door's gone. To death. It's just like a little frame of a tent. Just it <laughs> looks like somebody's abandoned house. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty bad. That was the most wild thing. Because again, I we came over, worked on my cars at my place a bunch of dollars, and first time I really like we dived into working on a car was when you got the S13 you have now. Yeah. And I remember you like come over and work on this, and I was like, bro, you're just working like I'm in fine. the driveway. You're like, yeah. It was like, what, middle of January? It was cold as I'm, shit, I'm dude. I'm literally wrapping my car in 30 degree weather in my driveway. How many? You've wrapped like two or three cars in your driveway, haven't you? Three or four, actually. He was wrapping the Fox body next to it while he was wrapping. <laughs> yeah. Just taking breaks. I got to try this car. They don't do this car. I have so outside. much respect for that, though. Like, so anyone that makes excuses, like, stop. Yeah, because, shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you have no, no excuse. I didn't actually... Every car I've ever owned, I built in my driveway. No, was, literally, because... So back to what we were talking about driving with this current car. We were at an event and I've talked about it a bunch, but Kyle's the one who's always some reason trusted me to either lead or follow him. And when I say this, it's he would be real close on me and I'm like new to tandems and run to my door continually to this. Well, I boofed. Yeah, <laughs> I boofed an event. I had not really even a full boofed. I had my power steering line blow, yeah. which has been my issues now for months. And I went turn and it got nice and smooth to really hard to I'm spinning out, which caused Kyle to spin and him get hit. And I remember he got hit and I was like, I felt so bad because we just got the car like yeah. perfect. And I was like, Kyle, get your car in the trailer, like get it to my house and work in the garage. And Kyle's working. guys like, this is the first time I've worked on a car in a garage. <laughs> <laughs> it was a luxury. <laughs> it was there for a while, too, because we were like, well, I might as well upgrade yeah, everything exactly. while it's in here. And that was a fun time. It was. And then, what's that car doing now? Uh, it's blown up. <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> uh, I actually put an oil filter on it that I thought was the right one. I mean, it sounded like it would work. You would think as 350Z filter. It's what I use on my car. Yeah, but apparently that's only for S14 SRs. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. I thought S14, I thought SRs and SRs. They SR. have like a little bit longer. So if anybody ever wants to do that is if you have an S14 SR, you can use a 350Z <laughs> oil filter. Still got to make sure it's really tight. But they have, it's the, the threads on yeah. the S14 is longer. Oh, yeah. And on the S13, it's a lot shorter. Mm -hmm. So the day that you, this, this was the most stressful day, I think, yeah. for both of us. Oh, yeah. So like the oil filter threaded on, it felt fine. It just felt like, you know, it was shorter, but it was tight. I'm like, all right, we're good to go. Before, and then keep in mind with this, when we're driving, I did my oil change with Kyle the night before. He did his oil change at his house, and we get to the track, and he went on like a joke, and he's like, oh, I always hand tighten my filters yeah. in my cars, like, because I was tightening mine. And I was like, got to the track, I'm like, do you tighten? He goes, yeah, I actually like tightened it this time. Oh, yeah. He's I like, did. I actually cranked it tight. I was like, all right, bet. I cranked mine just for that reason. <laughs> yeah, that <helped. laughs> So we go to the Denofa Drift Indy Advanced Clinic with Chelsea Denofa, and this is lap. One. First, 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 first lap. <laughs> in front of Chelsea Denofa. And we prepped for this. Like, we oh, upgraded yeah. everything on your car. Your car was in the garage, and we were like, oh, crap, we got to work on my car still. Yeah. We, like, cranked mine out. So Yeah, we basically had a brand new car, and your car was upgraded, too. Yeah, we changed every... We were, we were both amped for this. Oh, yeah, I was excited. And first lap. <clears throat> so, like, up to my first lap, the car didn't leak any oil. There was no signs of anything wrong. I even drove around and ripped on it. And it was the first lap, so we did, like... I'm sure you can post a picture of the layout. Yeah. But I did the first corner. I'm over here 30 seconds, like 10 seconds into my run. Bah, 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 banging limiter at like 8,000 I mean, RPM. banging. Because yeah. this, this was like, you went into a hairpin. Like, it's a hard oh, hairpin. Yeah. And then it's a really, like, I didn't think my car did a really long sweep. So you have to mm -hmm. be committed. Yeah. So as soon as you do this hairpin, it's full throttle the whole time to your the next corner. And I dumped it. I'm immediately banging limiter for like seven <laughs> seconds straight. Just bah, 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 through this whole, like, sweeper. And I get to the next corner, and I basically do a backy, and the car shuts off. I'm like, I don't know, maybe it's, maybe the gas lost or something. I go to turn the key. I was like, uh, uh. I was like, uh oh, maybe the battery died. I didn't know. I remember I called you during this, and you're like, it's, it blew. Yeah, it's, it blew up. And I, I was like <laughs> sitting here cranking it, and somebody pulled up. He's like, you got oil under the car. I'm like, I was like, why? So I roll it backwards, and there's just like a huge stream 
all the way to the first corner. I forget who it was, but they're going like, whose oil filter was it? I was like, yeah. no. <laughs> so I think what it was was my car makes like if you, with a VVL, you're making over 100 PSI of oil pressure at anything above like 3,000 RPMs. I think once I hit limiter, it just shot that thing off. My and engine it, bay was covered. It literally did because if you could see the track, so he hit the hairpin and right when he hit the hairpin, you kind of get off throttle and then you get on right at the sweep. Right when he touched that sweep, it just went... Oil yep. filter fell off, and it's the whole line. Oh, it just yeah. oil. Which, um, can we be real, though? Because my car does not have nearly yeah. the power to do that layout. <laughs> and I just helps. remember you did that, and I was like, damn it, dude, there's oil over the track. And then I did my <laughs> next lap, and I was like, oh, this is sick. Yeah. <laughs> I was slick in the track. I was like, like in the rain. I could literally, like, throw it, and then, like, I'd throw it back, pull the handbrake halfway, and just hold it. And then my car would just, like... Just, like, kind of walk its way down. It would exactly. sail all the way back. So thank you for your... Uh, yeah, no problem. Oil slick. But I even, like... I went into the ECU, and I was like, is there an oil failsafe on here? Like, an oil pressure failsafe? There was. I don't think it worked. I don't <laughs> think it did. We were, we were, like, researching everything. Yeah. We're running around getting oil. I even... I changed the oil at the track, got a new filter, somewhat wiped down my engine bay because it was covered. And it finally fired up. It ran great. Nice, quiet. It did, I was convinced it was perfectly fine. I yeah. was I was sitting there telling you, I'm like, dude, there's nothing to worry about. Like, it has a fail safe. Like, you are solid. Because it sounded It sounded perfectly perfect. fine. Still had good oil pressure. Yeah. I drove it down the street, got in the boost. I heard a rattle. I'm like, I don't know what this is. But it didn't sound, like, terrible. And so I drove it. I kept driving it around. And eventually, after getting in the boost a couple of times, it kept getting worse. <laughs> and someone's like... You know, the first thing to go when you starve your engine of oil is the turbo. I, pulled, like, I remember I pulled the coupler off with yeah. you. I'm like, what the? It was like, wow. Like it was bouncing <laughs> off the sides of the turbine house. I'm like, like this is not good. No, you had like <laughs> this much blade just yeah, missing on it that. Was, it was shot. It had some play before, but that was definitely the end of its life. Some play compared yeah. to like. <laughs> yeah, it was terrible. Everyone's like, man, just put a different turbo on it. I'm like, to do this, I'm going to have to get the car tuned. And I'm not going to be able to get it tuned within a day. It's not no. going to happen. So what? what how the rest of that day go? It was rough. If anybody I've heard, it, I've said it a thousand times that Kyle literally, me and Kyle became friends because I'm building my car and he being the nicest human being that he is. And I didn't even really know. Deidre knew who he was. I didn't even know who Kyle was. He's like, I'll come help you with your car. Yep. And for like six months, he was at my house. I got off work at six. He was there from six until like two in the morning, like seven days a week. Oh, absolutely. Literally working on, like we welded my cage, everything. In SR swap, five lug, brake lines, fuel lines, everything. The whole everything. car. Yeah, literally. So Kyle knows my car. So I will literally let Kyle drive, my, and you've done it. Absolutely. I will let my Kyle drive my car anytime, any day, and never a flaw. I mean, he drives, I, I hate watching Kyle drive my car because he shreds it's it way fun. harder than it's I do. It's a pretty good car. It works. But that day, it wasn't a good car. No. So your car had that wheel hop issue. For yeah. the longest time. And usually when it does it, I let out. But it was after I did that long sweeper, I dumped the clutch in second gear and it just like squatted. And I'm like, what is that? Like, what could that even be? <laughs> and I look over in the mirror and the wheel's like this. Like, <laughs> this is the side of the car wheel's like this. I'm like, like that is not good. <laughs> I'm sitting on the sidelines with B-Wag and he's like, oh, that's not. I'm like, oh, shit. I was like, like, what just happened? I tried to move it and the car was like, mm. and I was like, what is going on? And so I get out, and the wheel's just, like, shoved into the wheel well. I'm like, this is not good. And there's no way that that was your fault, because I battled this wheel hop issue for... Oh, yeah. A, I, I mean, a year. For the longest time. Uh, and we, we... And not just that. We took apart... Everything. Everything. I mean, you did it with me. We took apart everything yep. and could not be adjusted coils, everything. Yeah. Could not figure it out. And it, when it broke, it didn't just break, like... I don't know. Even Chelsea... Chelsea walked over with it broken like that. He rolls over in the car, <laughs> and he's like... Bro, I've never seen that. Exactly. Like, we, I've never seen something We break couldn't like that. see it because it was cracked behind the axle. We thought the, we thought an arm broke at first. We yeah. thought an arm and, like, the axle went. That's what it, you would have thought. No, it was, like, where the lower control arm goes, where the ball joint mounts up to the knuckle, it just, like, snapped mm -hmm. the knuckle. It and was it, weird. It took the knuckle. It took the one of the control arms. Yeah. The axle. Come to find out later, it took a hub. Yeah. Which none of this is your fault. No, it was going to happen eventually. <laughs> and then that event, we completely redid my car. Danny Worley, the savior he is. Yep. We spent the whole day because at this point, we're this is during we had a competition. Yeah, my car was blown up. I couldn't drive. Yeah, we had a competition the next day, so we were literally sitting there and we're like, "Oh, we got to get my car done." Yeah. Because I'm only competing in the light, which is just single runs. Kyle's competing in main, so we spent the entire freaking day, both of us busting, got my car done. Oh yeah. It was running. You did a test lap with like this much toe in the Oh, room. it was definitely a couple degrees of toe. <laughs> I was scared. I was, I was like, why is it I so was like, this thing is fast. Like, what's <laughs> going on? And then we got it done that night. 
aligned it the next morning. You did a few practice runs in tandems, yeah. like Roy and everybody that morning. Oh, yeah. And then I go out to do my practice runs. And I'm, I didn't even clutch kick. I was like doing a lot. So like you come and you kind of back in. And then basically where you're leaving the infield going up the wall, I'm on throttle. And it's like. Transmission gave out. Trans. And that was first off for people. Kyle, how many trains have you blown? Ten. Ten. I've blown four or five. I think four. I'm pretty sure four. I think four. Did you have a six putt clutch? Yes. That's why. I still do. That's why. The competition one. Same one you had in your car. Yep. That's why I went through all of them. That's why that other SR hatch I just had, it went through like three or four. Ironically, you think this probably would have been mentioned when I was buying my clutch and you were present? <laughs> it, did, it didn't hit me till like three years later. I'm like, I think that was the issue. <laughs> As I'm, I've blown up to literally, it was a running joke that me and Kyle were we, we, we ruined the, we did. the trans market. For I've gotten so many SR and K trans for free that now they're like $500. Yeah. We, so that, that's the worst part about that event is we blew my trans and me and you were panicking because we had an event like a week or two like yeah, exactly. later. We drove to Kentucky and paid what, 480 bucks something like that for a K trans? Yep. Didn't have a choice. Dude, that sucked. Yeah. Then you blew it up. <laughs> I blew it up the next event, didn't I? Exactly. <laughs> the same so thing. Tragic. I wasn't even clutch kicking. I was yeah. on throw. I was like... I've done that. I've done that before. We swapped my trans at the track. You've swapped a trans at a track. I have. I swapped. You helped me swap my trans at yep. the track. We've all been there. Yeah, we've not had great. Only luck. the SR guys with six belt clutches <laughs> do this. Do you want to take a break? Yeah, we'll take a quick. Take a break, and we'll come right back. To a, yeah, I, I got a so Yeah, bad. that's Deidre texting me yeah. and said, "Can we take a break so I can pee?" So <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna <laughs> put her on blast. Okay, okay. <laughs> so yeah. Good. All right, so we're back from our brief break where everybody had to kind of silence me and Kyle from going on and on because it wouldn't have stopped. Nope. <laughs> so thank you for Cody and DJ for that because we would have definitely rambled for at least another hour. Um, so we're going to dive back in where we left off before we rambled. The 86. Yeah, winning more cars, the 86. The third car Kyle has won. Yep. So it was another one of those giveaways. Like I enter in almost every single car giveaway because your odds are way better if you're in all of them, right? I think it was one of the, that was one of those. Uh, the, 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 spoken by a gambler. Yeah. 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 So that was one of those, like, I'm going to buy the same number that I've been buying the past five giveaways, which it was like well, 83 or something. I don't even know. I was like, eventually it's going to hit, right? And it did. And so this was actually a friend of mine's car that I have taken photos with. We cruised around a lot. The car went from like five minutes from my house. It went all the way to Alabama and then right back to me. <laughs> I had it for not even a month before I sold it on Bring a Trailer. That's where the running joke about if the car's in Ohio, just leave it in Ohio because exactly, Kyle will yeah. just go pick it up. Exactly. Yep. That's all money wasted on shipping at that point. <laughs> and it, that was another car that was Bring a Trailer. Yep. And I think it was it was a very hard to car to sell. It had to be sold to a specific person. who. It was more of like a track that. car. Yeah. So whoever, most people that want 86s want like a 4A GE or an NA engine. This one was like, it has a Honda motor in it. Who's going to want that? Uh, me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Some, somebody with a lot of money and just doesn't care what they're buying. You down talk this car so much. That car was a ride. rowdy. Yeah, it took Dude, me for a thing, ride in it, and I was like, holy shit. That thing was fast. Yeah, that it was, was insane. You were going to get in trouble if you had that car. Yeah, it was like driving a pop can with a 450 horsepower yeah. engine in it. <laughs> I remember I was like convincing you to sell it. You're like, I'm going to just start running the running track. Yeah. Start running. I, I'm I like, wanted to don't. drift it, but I'm like... This thing's really clean. Yeah, they talk me out of it. I know. I was like, please just sell this. Like, bro, look yeah. what happened the past few cars. There's so much money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you put that one up. You got a pretty good amount. 21. I it mean, just, I was, I was just really wanting again. about 20 out of it. Yeah. It just sold again for 22. Well, I'm bringing a trailer. Oh, did it really? It yeah. I, again, did, yeah. I knew it sold again, but I, did, I didn't think it brought that much. Yeah. Oh, that sick. was more than I sold it for. And you shipped that car from Ohio to? I think it was near Long Beach, California. Yeah, this dude, his house was like the size of Long Beach, California. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> I remember we looked it up and we're like, holy crud. Really dude. nice guy. But that's, man, how you, that's how you I make a lot of money. I felt broke when I saw his house. <laughs> yeah, dude. I think the whole state of California felt broke when they saw <laughs> yeah, his house. It was enormous. His house was like a whole city. God. <laughs> I thought it was like a neighborhood. No, it was it's just his house. So we had, now we are S15's first car. Mm -hmm. And then we are S13 current drift car yep. is a second car. Now we've won an A86 and sold that. And what ha What was this last week? Two uh, weeks ago. Two yeah. weeks ago. Two weeks ago. You did what? I won another one. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm entering in all of them. This is why everybody hates him. But Yeah, I win all the cars. Mm -hmm. But we talked about this on our podcast, and mm -hmm. it's everybody, and the, every time I get on there, they're like, Kyle's going to win another one. Yep. How many these giveaways do you enter? 
Almost all of them. Mm-hmm. And how many spots do you buy each? Usually two. Two to three, if I'm lucky. Yeah. Depends how much money I have that day. So you think about the odds when people want to bitch and complain. Literally. Saying, oh, Kyle wins it all. It's, it's the same guy that enters one of them and never enters another. He's like, oh, you win all of them. Man. You don't even enter them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I still want to fight. <laughs> exactly. We're yeah, still throwing hands with Cody on. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> And it's funny, all these people are like, Kyle, you're hacking. Like, dude, my computer shut off the other day. I couldn't get it turned on. <laughs> no, if Kyle's hacking, then we have a real problem yeah. with infrastructure because <laughs> me and you sat and tried to fix my VR setup you for no, like... no idea what I was doing. No, it was like, it was real easy. It was. And we, so there is, it out. there is no... Ha- Kyle isn't... you. Even your phone skills aren't the greatest. <laughs> no. You're no. not no. hacking anything. <laughs> nope, I couldn't tell you how to do it. <laughs> no. So that is a... It was a S13. SR20. SR20 SR car. Yep. And again, that car was from. It was from like five minutes from my house. You have pictures of drifting with that car, don't I've you? With, with the it. yeah, it with your of, first two forty. Yep, it was one of my best friend's car. He bought it pretty much bone stock from I think a grandma, and he turned it into a fully full on drift car, SR twenty and everything, and mm. he sold it to another one of our friends. Kind of, he sold it and then he bought it back and oh, then okay. painted it, drifted it again, and then sold it to Chris, Chris Morton. Yeah, yeah, and then Chris had it, and I worked on that car. And oh no, he sold it to some guy in Indiana. Then Chris got it off of him. He traded the Skyline. For I it. thought. Yeah, he traded for that car and got that car, yep. and he drove that for a bit. Which Chris had it for about a year, and then he sold it to the giveaway page. Yep, and I've I helped, got it. I've helped work on that car. Chris helped me work on. Chris is it's probably it's you, Chris, and. Uh, Nate, uh, Nate St. John that are probably the three people to help me work on the cars the most. Oh, yeah. And you got Chris's car. I did. And I didn't have it but two weeks. <laughs> That's crazy, I man. Literally, I completely changed it. <laughs> literally, Chris Morton drove it in my garage, parked it. I immediately tore this thing apart. I took the fenders off. I took the wheels off. I immediately started doing body work. And I had it wrapped with new wheels within two days. I didn't even realize you had the car yet. And Deidre went to go get like dinner and stuff with one of her friends. And I was sitting around bored. And I'm like, I'm going to go hang out with Kyle. And I show up and it's like, Car's completely torn apart. It's like, like a totally different car. Though. Yeah, partially wrapped. There's different wheels on it. Yeah. He's like, should I raise it? I, I, and I'm like, I didn't even know you had this car yet. <laughs> and that night it was done. You wrapped yeah. the whole car. So like at that point, I've never had a stock body hatch. So I was like, this is what I've always wanted to do with one. Like it, granted, it wasn't a kitten that I wanted. It wasn't really the color that I wanted. I was just like, this is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to sell it. You literally wrapped this car to be your last blue car. But with stock body. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. As you talked about. With wheels. You don't like overs. Nope. This had no overs. I mean, I do, but I don't. Yeah, they have to be tasteful. Mm-hmm. I like overs because if I slam into somebody, I'm not going to feel as bad about mm-hmm. it. With mm-hmm. the clean quarters, I'm like, wow, can't, can't yeah. fix that. Yeah. You're still going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I tanned it with my Skyline, but I was pretty scared of hitting somebody. So we've dived now into winning cars. We've dived into all of this stuff. But you've had a pretty rich, yeah, that's four cars. Keep in mind, four mm-hmm. cars won after selling $100, one. dollars worth. Yeah, after selling one for 30 freaking K. And, and to add the amount of parts yeah. oh, and a lot wheels of those. and everything else that Kyle's won. Yeah. You so, won like all the suspension for the current S13. I won the coilovers. <laughs> I won the front wheels. I think that was it. Didn't you win an angle kit for it and got rid of it? for No, I actually won an angle kit from a different page. That GK <laughs> Tech full on... <laughs> Like FD angle kit, but I didn't. I didn't use it. This is how you build crazy drift cars. You just win. You gamble. Everything. Yeah. yeah. I'd say you hang out with Kyle, but you don't get any luck if you hang yeah. out with Kyle. Yes. Why do. spend a thousand dollars on that angle kit when you could just blow it on a giveaway and win a whole car? No. Watch me spend a thousand dollars on an angle kit while I watch Kyle win a thousand dollars of parts on a giveaway. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I'm like, "Bet I just did this." He's like, "Yeah, I want a new pair of seats, some coilovers, that angle kit." And I'm like. Hell yeah. <laughs> What'd you get? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> but you've had a pretty rich history in drifting, going from Drift India era, all that. Let's, I mean, dive into that a little bit, man. I know people are definitely interested in your progression and yeah. everything you've done. So when I was working at Jiffy Lube, I drove a Silverado every day, and then I got my S chassis. So I was daily driving my no heat, single cam, S chassis, and 10 degree temperatures all winter until I did my first drift event. I wrecked it. And on my way home, my wheel fell off and destroyed the other quarter panel. <laughs> After and, hitting the tractor tire? Yeah. So that was because I put Honda wheels on a 240 in the hub centers a little bit small. I didn't know that. <laughs> now I do. But I literally couldn't drive it the next several days till I got it fixed. So I quit my job. And I didn't work for probably another year after that because I was buying and selling cars constantly. So I literally built my 240 by buying and selling cars. I and found, that found started a, a whole movement for you. Oh, you have no <laughs> idea how much money I've made off of buying and selling cars. 
I know. A I've lot. seen you drive a lot of different cars <laughs> oh, yeah. to my house. Literally. And I never know when you're buying when you just show up in one. Yep. So, like, when I first got my SR started, I bought my 240. I bought a Civic sedan. I, I sold it, bought another 240 as a daily. Daily drove that for a while. The guy fucked me over on the title. So, I sold <laughs> it. in there. Yep, sold it. I bought an EF hatch for way too much money. It was blown up. Put a motor in it. So I traded it for a 300,000-mile 95 Accord. Is that the red one? No, it was, it was green. The bone stock, my grandma car. I didn't have a license. So I, I was like, <laughs> I can't drive this lowered EF hatch around. I traded for a grandma's car. Nobody's going to look twice at me. <laughs> Nobody ever did. Never got pulled over. Don't take this advice. Yeah. So I actually traded that for a 99 Miata. And I lowered it on some cheap coils, cheap wheels. Sold it for like $4,400. <laughs> that paid for my SR swap. <laughs> paid for my SR swap. It bought me wheels. It bought me a body kit. So I had a full blown drift car for no money, basically, for like fifteen hundred bucks. This is like every car you've had, you've done this. Yeah. Year. So it's like I was like, I found the cheat code to life. It, Buy some piece of shit on marketplace for a thousand bucks. Turn around, sell it for four grand. You made three grand for doing nothing. And you barely unshit the car. Exactly. Yeah, literally, <laughs> <laughs> I had to double the price. I think I've seen you like bring some cars home, and it's like posted before it's in your driveway. Yep, pretty much. So I you, just I like looking at your social medias and stuff like that, and seeing on your story, it'll be like. I don't know, 3.30 in the morning, and you'll be driving cross-country with yep. the trailer. Like, you know, you got to be up to find the deals. And, oh, I'm and on you Marketplace. you sure do, but... Literally, in between podcasts, I was on Marketplace. <laughs> he's, like, walked out of us working on cars at my house midway, and he's like, oh, got a deal. And he just, like, <laughs> walks out the yeah. door, and he's, like, driving to go. He's, like, has his trailer yeah. ready to go. Because if I don't get it, somebody else is. Mm -hmm. I want that money. <laughs> I know you do. So you went from there, so you crashed it, sold the Miata, built it, and then where'd your drift career... I mean, when did it... It took off a little more. Drift Indy started competing. Kind of. So I did like, I did my first two events the first year. For the rest of the year, I kind of just chilled out. I did a lot of street drifting just because it was free and I was broke, still broke. But I did a lot of my street drifting because it was free and I don't know, it was just fun. So it was after like two years of that, I got my SR and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to really take a thing and take a try at this drifting because I didn't, Drift Indy wasn't that popular back then. Mm -hmm. So like my first event was them. There's probably only 15, 20 cars. And I've been going to Drift Indy events probably since, like, the first Street League of 2012. Street League was cool. It was very popular. But, like, the grassroots smaller events weren't all that popular. Mm -hmm. So by the time I got my SR, I started driving pretty much every single event from there on out. And it was, like, my first or second event with that SR, I was already tandeming with people. Not that I knew what I was doing, but I was tandeming. <laughs> and I think it was after I wrapped my car purple with some big wheels, I started to learn how to ride the wall. Tapped it a bunch, didn't total my car, and then I really dove into, it was like, after breaking so many transmissions, I'm like, maybe it's the heavy wheels. It was not the heavy wheels. <laughs> no, so I put monoblocks on it, and I focused mainly on my driving skills rather than just having fun. And so, a lot of that's now I can ride people's doors. Like yes, my, you can. My last drift event was Halloween Bash. I touched four people's doors. That was not doing a dent. That was just like a little tire mark. Oh, I know. The one with my side skirt. Yeah. You're like, oh, you hit. And it was yeah. like just a tiny bit. The wraps just, the fiberglass gets a little wrap yeah. off. And I don't normally run people's doors because I don't know how they feel about it. I've never had somebody I can tandem with every single lap. Like, you know how Colton and Tyler, they drive mm -hmm. with each other all day long. I don't have that kind of person. So it's me. Like, somebody comes to me, hey, run with me. I'm like, do you care if he gets damaged? They're like, no. I'm like, right against the door <laughs> the whole run. Like, it's. <laughs> This is why every single time we drive, everybody's like, what? And I'm like, Kyle knows what I have an extra part of. And unfortunately, <laughs> it's not going to be an extra for long because exactly. he's going to gun for it because it's the one car he feels confident that he's like, eh, if we fuck it he's up, like, I know oh, what he has. Exactly. Oh, Mike, you just bought a set of doors? Well, I bought, exactly I, what I put I bought them on. another door at a drift event because we were getting so buck. I was like, I probably should have both sides yeah. backups. And I was pushing you through that corner. Or no, it was when Dan was driving your car. I was pushing him. Yeah, that was a that was a funny turn of events. Mm -hmm. So we're at a, a drift event, and uh, Dan, Danger Dan from Hoonigan, comes out. Um, and I was talking to Dan. I was like, hey, dude, take some laps on my car. Give him my car to go drive. And first lap, he's like, oh, I'm trying to get the feel for it. It's raining out. Second lap, Kyle pulls up, and he thinks it's me. And Kyle's over here, like, giving two, like, oh, let's go. Let's tandem. <laughs> let's tandem. And then Dan was like, he didn't want to tandem. But yeah. They were like, they. everybody thought it was me. Nobody knew it was Dan in the car. Yeah. So they sent, they're like, no, fuck this. Like, Kyle might <laughs> drive all the time anyways. Like, they sent him, and two laps, you're just 
eating yep. Dan's door the entire <laughs> I was time. Like, I was like, Mike shreds in the rain. Wow. <laughs> I can't drive in the rain. So I don't know why Kyle thought I could shred. I don't know why Kyle wanted to tandem with me in the rain. You've seen me drive in the rain. Yep. I, I was, like, I was like, maybe this will help. And you were killing it. <laughs> well, <laughs> you thought it wasn't you. And I just remember literally we pull up and you drive off the track first. And then you look and you're like, who the fuck is in yeah. your car? And I'm like, <laughs> there, was, there was one lap. He spun out. We made eye contact. I'm like, wow, Mike spun. It wasn't you. No. <laughs> no I just remember he gets out and you're like, I am so sorry for that. And he's like, I thought he's like, no, bro, that was sick. <laughs> so you won and you, you drove all the sh current street leagues. Uh, every single one. Well, besides the very first one they did like Michigan or something. I didn't drive that. And then the oil filter trans. Yeah. We don't, I, you still drive that because we did teams. And then the street league though. Yeah, but we I got booted. Street league teams. Yeah, that's true. So we did that. Yeah, that drove my car points. teams. Yeah. Because you're what? You're, you're, you're on the points board right now, right? Yeah. What What are you? I have no idea. I, don't know I just know I'm in the top 16. I know you're up there, so that works. <laughs> and you won, You got first place. The first street league they fired back up, I won. In the I, purple car. Yep. After that, a blue transmission. No surprise. Nope. <laughs> there was, I think it was my second run of the day. It was mid-drift, like no clutch kicking, nothing. Blow. Huh. I was like, nice. See, and that's, is it, is it the six plug clutch or do it, we just I think it is. are too aggressive? Because every time I do it, it's not on the clutch kick, it's on throttle. I think it's the clutch destroys the transmission over time and it just gives out eventually. Yeah. Because nobody else blows transmissions. No. It's only the dudes with the six plugs. No, it's only us. Yeah, pretty much. You did this to me. <laughs> yeah. But like, Trey even Atkinson like, Atkinson blows transmissions, but he's got a six plug too. So mm. apparently, don't run a six pucks. Six pucks yeah. are or, bad. Or you run a clutch delay valve. The clutch delay valve, or you know what you do if you're driving a 240 and you've got a KASR or something? Z32. Put a Z32 trans on that. You'll never blow it up. And if you want to know how bad we are, so Kyle has a Z32 trans in his current car. Yep. We blew all my trans up. We were like, this is ridiculous. I went to go buy a Z32 trans, and then the guy's like, do you want this one, this one? So me and Kyle drove down, and we're like, you have one, I have one. We bought five. <laughs> I think so. I bought five five C thirty two transmissions. Yep. I was like, if we're gonna bullet, if we're gonna do what we normally do, might as well backups. Your I haven't blown one since. Your GX still smells like gear oil. Oh, yeah, bro, from that, that trip, that thing it stinks. Does. That's the worst smelling fluid ever, too, man. I feel so bad. It's for not you. just from that trip because it's the worst ones from we got the CDO nine trans. Oh yeah, and we like we were we like, oh, it it's empty. empty, and we're like. <laughs> oh no! It's not empty. Oh no! And it got bad. And then I don't know why we picked up five transmissions and did the exact same thing again. Yep. We don't learn. But it's stupid because you'll probably never blow one now. No. Now I, they have all the extras. Yeah. No. Now I won't. They're just gonna be sitting there in a corner. But at least we know we have extras. When yeah. Kyle sells one for seven grand and drives the price up yep. to C thirty three you transmissions, go. you're sitting on a lottery. Yeah, ticket. you're sitting on a gold mine. <laughs> I can't sell them though, bro. We can't do this. <laughs> as soon as you sell it, you're gonna blow it. Yes, dude, I can't do it. So, wrapping things up a little bit, future plans. I mean, I know right now if you didn't, the oil filter thing is still ongoing. Your motor got sent out for a rebuild, so it's out getting redone. Um, you're hoping to get that done soon. In the meantime, you'll be driving your wife's car, which. We won't dive too deep into that because we're going to have an episode with me and Deidre and Kyle and Hannah. So we'll dive into it a little deeper. But are you going to be um, driving Drift Indy a lot this year, traveling a bunch? What's the what's the going forward plans? So I've driven 90% of my Drift events with Drift Indy, and I've only driven, I think, three other tracks. But that was only like one event over the course of like seven years. So this year I'm driving in an uh, iTrack Motorsports out in Tennessee. They're holding an event at Polecat Training Facility, which is like a huge road course that nobody's ever drifted on. So I'm doing that. Uh, there was another event that I planned on driving that I don't remember what it was, but I planned on <laughs> it driving. <laughs> it's planned, solid plans. <laughs> it's something, but I do plan on driving Drift Indy this year as usual. Every event? Maybe. Well, unless it, it depends on what other events line up with it. Yeah. Because I've never drifted. Like, There's all these events that I have a lot of internet friends that I talk to, and they're like, come drive my event. Come drive out here. Come drive out here. I never do. Well, it's so hard to do because, again, we talked about before, Drift Indy as an organization for support, for what they've done for us as oh, yeah. drivers, for everything is phenomenal. On top of that, we literally live 15 minutes <laughs> on yeah. the track. Exactly. I don't know why we – well, I know why we trailer our car. Should we blow transmissions up? But <laughs> exactly. We, I mean, I drove my car until like two events ago. I finally bought a trailer, but I drove my car to and from 15 mm -hmm. minutes to the track. I street drove mine the entire season, Same. loaded everything up. Drove it there, Lucky you. loaded everything back up, and Lucky drove it home. Mm -hmm. I uh, drove different ones of Kyle's cars home every event. <laughs> yeah. Because well, I trailered his home. Why he trailered mine home <laughs> after trailering his home. <laughs> yes, yeah, so that's not our good luck. So hitting events, com competition. 
I had somebody ask me that earlier, is that I want to do competitions, but a lot of them are far away. So you're doing street league. Absolutely. Absolutely doing street league. Yep. And then kind of roll the dice and see where things roll from there. Yeah. So the thing is with me doing street league this year is I drive my wife's car better than I do my own. <laughs> it drives phenomenal for what it is. It's literally just a turbo Miata with an eBay turbo kit, tuned on mega squirt with an angle kit and a bottle diff. And you it, can't say you drive it better than yours because, oh, bro, no, it, it could be better, but the way you drive your current car? Well, yeah, but holy shit. Can we add, though, like Hannah's car looks so freaking good. They're mm -hmm. twins. Yeah, yeah exactly. they really are twins, and it looks amazing. I'm jealous. I wish it was my Miata. <laughs> you're kind of stealing it <laughs> from me. <laughs> She's going to end up beating you up. Yeah, pretty much. You're going to get locked out of your shop here soon. But I think that's a very competitive car, what it is. So, like, I, I followed... A lot of people on very sticky tires at Halloween Bash, and I was on some like Ling Longs. I could keep up. <laughs> I could put it in their door, no problem. That's going to be sick. And I think it'll be fun in Street League. As long as you're hunkered down. Yeah. I'm out the seat five. on the floor. Yeah. yeah. Just don't have a seat. Sit on a milk crate. <laughs> That's what I got to do. I'm going to bolt it in. So a bunch then. So a few comps, see where things go. Drift Indy, of I course. I do want to do the Riverside 50K. I'm down. If my car is done in time. I'm down. I'm, I'm, I did it last year with a rental, and I qualified like 13th out of like 40 cars. Listen, the offer's on the table, like I gave you last one. Your car's down. Yeah, that's true. My car don't make much, but we can... I'm pretty good at blowing transmissions. <laughs> we got five extras, <laughs> baby. True, Let's yeah. fucking, <laughs> fucking blow them up. We <laughs> have to. We got Run this shit. We got, we got yours still sitting out, so we're we're set. Let's not mine, blow any transmissions. Mine's pretty good, though. I don't think mine's going to blow up. I wish we just had your car done. Maybe. It's going to be a couple months. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Yeah. But um, I don't think we're done talking. I think we're uh, probably going to lean into a little more of uh, another episode because I think it's, I mean, it's been a good time. And really this one, we really wanted to dive into really letting people know who Kyle is. Everybody's seen on the internet, very notorious for the, all the, really everything we talked about, you've been notorious oh, yeah. for. Mm -hmm. And you really never told a lot of these stories except no. for like me and you talking or like like the homies yep i'm a very quiet guy yeah no so anybody who ever wants to say that kyle is quiet i really thoroughly <laughs> want to say because everybody every event is like kyle doesn't talk much bro i hang out with kyle all the time and my, this is this is kyle welcome to kyle because he actually talks <laughs> he does mm, he does he just gets very mm, in the thanks. zone at like drift events <laughs> mm -hmm. or he's hunting for his orange drink yep or looking for cars <laughs> in marketplace or yeah. like, that's, that, that's that's what it is or another brand. <laughs> how often at the house what are you doing kyle <laughs> on marketplace yep <laughs> that's what it is in indiana <laughs> yeah and then just leave and go pick <laughs> exactly, <yeah. laughs> look what i got <laughs> but on that note thank you everybody thank you cody again yeah, thank, thank you, you. kyle deidre um, as I said, we're going to run it up for some more. Um, thank you for watching the typical BS, like, comment, subscribe, whatever you're going to do, but appreciate everybody supporting and yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you.